Shalom friends and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of House Lead Ministries as we study in today uh, the life of Elijah, one of the particular situations in his life. We learn in powerful things what God has done and how God has provided through him and for him actually in a time of drought when there was drought in Israel for three and a half years. We want to learn some wonderful things from the Lord today about His miracles, about His provision, about the things that God can and want to do. Amen. We believe in the power of God. God is powerful, all-powerful. And we as His children, we believe in His great and mighty power and whatever He wants to do. So today we're going to continue this study and uh, i'm going to show you the second part of this message and then right after this i'll be back here to minister to you and to believe for your miracle as well and to share a couple of things that are very excited with you so stay tuned don't go away i will be right back and please believe believe for your miracle today god just doesn't want us to believe because he said so god wants us to believe because we love him Remember I was teaching you last, I would say, Tuesday night, what the love of God is? Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised. If whatever God says to you to do, you will have to follow to the very end until you see the result. Amen. Amen. Amen to the very end, but don't lose heart. That's why we call ourselves believers. But we believe in what God says. And we continue on, step by step, moment by moment, trust in Him. Amen. Amen. So let's move on. So Elijah probably was shocked, but in verse 13, he said to her, See, emotions of that prophet never spoke for themselves. They followed his faith. His emotions followed his faith. Is that speaking to somebody today about this message? Some, this message is talking to you about something? Amen. Elijah said to her, don't fear. Now he's speaking to the same woman that God spoke about that she's going to provide for Elijah. Now he's encouraging her, do not fear. So Elijah took his eyes off of a woman as a provider. As his provider, he kept his eyes upon the Lord. And what he said, do you see that? Hallelujah. When God is calling you to do something, many times God is calling you to be a channel to restore somebody's life. To restore something. That's the job that God has given you. Especially within yourself. Within your life. Now I'm preaching. Therefore, you have to understand that whatever God is doing or telling you to do, you have to follow Him because this is what God is using to restore things in yourself, to bring them to a victory. All right? Before you're going to see that victory, God is going to restore these things in your life. And He will encounter you with it, and you will help Him to do it. By submitting yourself to Him and follow Him exactly what He says. In, the, in, 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 in this incident with Elijah, God told him that it is through this woman. And if you look back into verse 9, he didn't say through this woman. He said, I have commanded. 
he has commanded that woman. She never heard a voice. She never heard a word from God. How did God command this woman to provide for Elijah? Think about this. Think deeper because you and I are encountered, in, we are encountered with the same things in our life. That's the way we walk with God. Because God commands things to happen as a fulfillment. Do you understand what I mean? You may face impossibilities and a situation that it doesn't look promising at all. But if God told you that this is going to happen on that road, you walk that road until it happens because God has already commanded that thing to happen. And along the way, in God's time, you will meet that answer. Got it? Am I solving the problem with this formula for you today? Good. So probably the other way, when you're going to be reading that by yourself, you'll just read this, hmm, that's interesting, and pass on and on and on and go on and on and never see what God really meant here and what God's heart is speaking, right? Now, so Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small... You see, now, point number two in my message today, and I want you to understand, it's, it's the wisdom that God is showing, honestly. Honestly. Elijah did not yield to his feelings and his own... Uh, common sense and say there's got something got to be something wrong here there's a mistake that woman has nothing so I'm gonna look, go and look for another a widow to find that person that God sent but he knew that he came to the right place and he didn't give in to his emotions instead he trusted God what God said and the second thing, if you will not give in to your emotions, but if you will be faithful enough to stand to where God has called you, even if it doesn't, if it doesn't look good, the second thing what God is going to do, He will reveal to you the plan. What to do. See, God does not reveal plans to people that are just emotional. Oh, Discouraged here, discouraged there, discouraged. You will cry in your corner in the spirit of desperation and discouragement until you'll cry yourself out and God will be there just waiting. So, and he will say, how long? Just a little bit more, Lord. Another day, cry. Okay, God is waiting. Are you done? Not yet, Lord. My emotions are still. I feel pain. I feel discouraged. I feel I've, I've, been, I've been surrounded by enemies. I feel I've been rejected. Okay, God says, how many days are you going to, should I give it to you another week? Okay, I'll wait. Are you with me? Amen. Keep crying. Keep feeling helpless, rejected, disgusted. God is waiting. All right? Because under this condition, as you, if you are going to be, there's no way that God will share the, 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 the victory or, or the plan. When you're going to stop, God says, are you done? Oh, God, I think I, I'm done. I got no more tears. I got nothing to, no, no more. I, I got, my mind is blowing up. I just don't think, I don't know what to think. God says, good, let me show you. And then when you are at peace, then when these things are over, God says, well, this is what you need to do. Already. Uh-huh. And God, some, some, somebody will say, well, no, Lord. 
that's too much for me. I trust that, as you said, I came to that woman. You didn't provide. Why should I make another step of faith? I'm going to make another mistake. God says, move. You understand what I mean? Some of us are getting discouraged right before the door because we don't see that open. And the answer is on the other side. Oh God, you didn't open the door. That means I'm making a mistake and I don't want to make mistakes any longer. Lord, I'm going to sit and wait until you're going to do the right thing. Sounds familiar? Absolutely. That's our emotions. But when you move forward with God and be victorious, amen? amen, and do what he says without stopping anywhere, I think it's powerful what I say today. Amen. I think God is giving the answer to many people today. God is not going to make you do it. God is going to require you to do it. Amen. Amen. God is not going to make you to believe. God will say, I want you to believe. I'm getting excited. Because I'm speaking about myself, my own situation. The answer is clear. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. The answer is clear. So right after, when if your emotions did not kick in and you did not get discouraged at the first thing what you saw, God will see that, that you made another step by faith and he'll speak to you. He'll instruct you what to do. Amen? Amen. And what did God say to Elijah? He said, speak to her and say, do not fear. He didn't tell her that she was chosen vessel. But she was. According to verse 9, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. God has chosen that woman. Are you with me? Amen. Oh, glory to God. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. 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 Nothing is impossible. Don't lose heart. Listen, if we're going to stop preaching the gospel or the word of God, then we're going to have to kick in and start speaking things on our own. Psychology. Amen? Amen. But here is something that is beyond any psychology. It's faith. Faith. Pure faith. Trust in God. And this is what God wants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God spoke to Elijah to tell this woman, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. Don't be discouraged. But make me a small cake from it first. So he said, go home. You have the last uh, measure of flour and a little bit of oil. Just go home, make me a cake first. Don't worry about your son or yourself. But the problem was that she told him already that I have enough only for me and my son and then we are going to die. No more. So you got to be, you see, you, on, on Elijah's place, you got to be so bold to speak things like that. Whether you are lying to the woman and you're trying to get away, to, to get her meal and just run, or whether you are really called by God to say what you said. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is why Elijah saw so many miracles. This is why Elijah was a prophet. He spoke exactly what God said. Exactly. Even it was absolutely ridiculous to our own mind. Amen. You listen? Amen. So what he really said to her, you are going to give me that last meal. Amen. Amen. And 
For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on this earth. Three and a half years, he says, you will have no luck. For three and a half years, everything is going to be provided for you. I want you to pay attention to something here that probably a lot of us missing. Like I said, I love to teach the Word of God verse by verse. <laughs> after Elijah said to this woman, after he said to her, to go and make that cake for him, and afterward make some for yourself and your son, he didn't wait for her answer. But he gave her the promise. He gave her from the promise from the throne of God. And he said, For thus says the Lord God of Israel, that you, have, you will have no luck for the next three and a half years. I want, I want to connect this message in every point that you will see what is going on because this is very important message been preached many times by many other people i'm sure you heard about this message before right you read this before you heard about this story yeah. see the reason elijah was so sure of what he was saying, even it was ridiculous to the mind of men, is because at the very beginning, God promised him that this woman is going to be the channel to provide for you. So here's the catch. It's very important to stand upon the word of God that God speaks to you from the very beginning. And not to change direction, your heart, your thought about it, or faith. It's very important because God does not change. He doesn't change. Nor has the point of variation, the Bible says. He doesn't change. What God said, it's not his opinion. It's not his suggestion. It's his plan. And he doesn't change his plans. Amen? Amen. We must be very careful when we're listening to God. Because it is our destiny that God is lining up by what he says. And if we are not listening, and we are in fear, and try to stay away and get away from what God said, we are moving ourselves, moving from our destiny. God doesn't have many ways, many paths. He has one way and one path for you. In a specific direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what was the real deal here, basically, really, is to keep them both alive for three and a half years. He didn't preach the gospel. He was not prophesying. He was not doing anything. It was drought. And yet God was specific to provide and to make sure that they would be provided and looked after even if they don't do anything. This is how specific our God is and care. He cares for you.
We must hear God's voice before we do anything. All right? But when God will speak to you, you do it. God does not test you in a sense whether it's going to work or not. When God says to do something, it means He prepares something. He already commanded these things to happen right ahead of you if you will obey what God says now. Because God is the creator of every plan. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. We are serving in the mighty and powerful God. And today I want to pray with you, believe God. Let me just put my hands toward this camera. Now why don't you stretch your hands and touch your television sets. Let the Lord touch your life. Father God, in the mighty precious name of Yeshua, I give you the praise and I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for healing that throat right now in the name of Jesus. I can see that God is touching your throat right here and He is healing you on both sides. In the name of Jesus, you've been healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. And somebody's just teeth being healed in the name of Yeshua. You have a problem with your teeth, I think, on the low, lower part of your left side. And God is healing your teeth right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody has a problem on your left cheek i don't know it's under or on your left cheek god is healing your left cheek in the name of jesus continue to believe god continue to believe and trust him hallelujah father thank you for your goodness blessed be your wonderful name glory is god glory is god we give you the praise and the glory we thank you lord god for your anointing today we thank you lord god for building our faith we thank you my lord jesus for touching our lives because you are our Father, you are a good God, and we give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, friends, again, I want to show you this kind of a format of magazine we have right now. Again, we started last, last the beginning of this year, and now we continue again with this format on this magazine. It says House of David Ministries magazine, and it's about... Um, eight to ten pages and it's all my teachings here like it looks like this and uh, all the way on the back you're gonna have part of our catalog and of course at the end of the pages you'll say you'll see a seat sower page and a prayer request and all other things uh, there's a lot of things that are available through this magazine also you will know how to support our ministry if you would like to and many other things upcoming updates and events and all these things But it's going to be in this form of a magazine little small magazine booklet form. Amen If you would like to uh, receive this magazine in booklet form from us uh, once a month Give us a call. Give us a call and request your copies Tell us that you want to be on a mailing list and you will receive this magazine now can I talk to you about certain things that uh, it is available through our ministry. Uh, we would like you to become a partner, of course. We do need your support. And I trust God that you will sign up. I trust God that you like our ministry and you will sign for whatever amount you can. And you can do this in many different ways. We can do, we can do direct deposit once a month. Or you can do your... Uh, process your um, credit card once a month as well. It will be in our system. It's safe, of course. Or uh, you can, of course, send, send your check through mail or you can call us. Four different ways you can help us today by uh, giving to our ministry and help us. Why don't you do that? Would you become a partner today? You will receive this magazine and all the information about us and also you will help us to continue to stay on the air and broadcast this ministry thank you so much give us a call for additional prayer you give us a call again god bless you and don't forget soon we're going to announce you where i'm going to be with my miracle meetings not mine but the lord's miracle meetings and also revival meetings across this country so stay tuned see you tomorrow god bless you shalom the
Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain. You ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At the end of the age, when the earth will reclaim, you will gather the nations before you. And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. With wisdom and mercy and justice, you'll reign at your Father's side. And the angels will cry. shield in our hand and a sword at our side there's a fire in our spirit that cannot be denied as the father has told us for this you have died for the nations that gather before you and the names of all men will to hear of the lamb who was crucified who descended to hell yet was raised up to reign on the father House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.
you shall ever prosper. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. For though the nations rage against you, O Jerusalem, know this, that the Lord your God, He's always, always, always with you. For does not the prophet Isaiah say, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. So I say unto you, fear not, O Jerusalem. Fear not, Tel Aviv. Fear not, Haifa and Tiberias. Fear not, sons of David, for the Lord your God is with you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No. Thus says the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No. Thus says the Lord. Rise up, all your sons of Jacob. Rise up, all your cities of Judah. Rise up, from the Lord unto God. Was fighting for you. Stand up for the God of Israel. Stand up for the Son of David. Stand up for the King of Kings. Standing with you. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No, that says the Lord. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No weapon from against you shall prosper. No. God says the Lord, rise up, all your sons of Jacob, rise up, all your cities of Judah, rise up, for the Lord your God, for fighting for you, stand up, for the God of Israel, stand up, for the Son of David, stand up. House of David. Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom. Shalom, friends, and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of House Lead Ministries. As we study in today uh, the life of Elijah, one of the particular situations in his life, we learn in powerful things what God has done and how God has provided through him and for him, actually, in a time of drought, when there was drought in Israel for three and a half years. We want to learn some wonderful things from the Lord today about His miracles, about His provision, about the things that God can and want to do. Amen. We believe in the power of God. God is powerful, all-powerful. And we as His children, we believe in His great and mighty power and whatever He wants to do. So today we're going to continue this study and uh, I'm going to show you the second part of this message and then right after this I'll be back here to minister to you and to believe for your miracle as well and to share a couple of things that are very excited with you so stay tuned don't go away I will be right back and please believe believe for your miracle today God just doesn't want us to believe because he said so God wants us to believe because we love him Remember I was teaching you last, I would say, Tuesday night, what the love of God is? Mm -hmm. So don't be surprised. If 
Whatever God says to you to do, you will have to follow to the very end until you see the result. Amen. Amen. To the very end. But don't lose heart. That's why we call ourselves believers. But we believe in what God says. And we continue on, step by step, moment by moment. Trust in Him. Amen. Amen. So let's move on. So Elijah probably was shocked, but in verse 13, he said to her, See, emotions of that prophet never spoke for themselves. They followed his faith. His emotions followed his faith. Is that speaking to somebody today about this message? This message is talking to you about something? Amen. Elijah said to her, don't fear. Now he's speaking to the same woman that God spoke about that she's going to provide for Elijah. Now he's encouraging her, do not fear. So Elijah took his eyes off of a woman as a provider. As his provider. He kept his eyes upon the Lord. And what he said, do you see that? Hallelujah. When God is calling you to do something, many times God is calling you to be a channel to restore somebody's life. To restore something. That's the job that God has given you. Especially within yourself, within your life. Now I'm preaching. Therefore, you have to understand that whatever God is doing or telling you to do, you have to follow Him because this is what God is using to restore things in yourself, to bring them to a victory. All right? Before you're going to see that victory, God is going to restore these things in your life. And He will encounter you with it, and you will help Him to do it. By submitting yourself to Him and follow Him exactly what He says. In, the, in, 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 in this incident with Elijah, God told him that it is through this woman... And if you look back into verse 9, he didn't say through this woman. He said, I have commanded. He has commanded that woman. She never heard a voice. She never heard a word from God. How did God command this woman to provide for Elijah? Think about this. Think deeper because you and I are encountered. In, we are encountered with the same things in our life. That's the way we walk with God. Because God commands things to happen as a fulfillment. Do you understand what I mean? You may face impossibilities and a situation that it doesn't look promising at all. But if God told you that this is going to happen on that road, you walk that road until it happens because God has already commanded that thing to happen. And along the way, in God's time, you will meet that answer. Got it? Am I solving the problem with this formula for you today? Good. So probably 
the other way, when you're going to be reading that by yourself, you'll just read this, hmm, that's interesting, and pass on and on and on and go on and on and never see what God really meant here and what God's heart is speaking, right? Now, so Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small... You see, now... Point number two in my message today, and I want you to understand, it's, it's the wisdom that God is showing, honestly. Honestly. Elijah did not yield to his feelings and his own uh, common sense and say, there's got something got to be something wrong here, there's a mistake, that woman has nothing, so I'm going to go and look for another a widow, to find that person that God sent. But he knew that he came to the right place, and he didn't give in to his emotions. Instead, he trusted God, what God said. And the second thing, if you will not give in to your emotions, but if you will be faithful enough to stand to where God has called you, even if it, doesn't, if it doesn't look good, the second thing what God is going to do, He will reveal to you the plan. What to do. See, God does not reveal plans to people that are just emotional. Oh, discouraged here, discouraged there, discouraged. You will cry in your corner in the spirit of desperation and discouragement until You'll cry yourself out, and God will be there just waiting. So, and he will say, how long? Just a little bit more, Lord. Another day, cry. Okay, God is waiting. Are you done? Not yet, Lord. My emotions are still. I feel pain. I feel discouraged. I feel I've, I've, been, I've been surrounded by enemies. I feel I've been rejected. Okay, God says, how many days you're gonna should I give it to you another week? Okay, I'll wait. Are you with me? Amen. Keep crying. Keep feeling helpless, rejected, disgusted. God is waiting. All right? Because under this condition, as you if you are going to be, there's no way that God will share the the, 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 the victory or, or the plan. When you're going to stop, God says, are you done? Oh, God, I think I, I, I'm done. I got no more tears. I got nothing to, no, no more. I, I got, my mind is blowing up. I just don't think, I don't know what to think. God says, good, let me show you. And then when you are at peace, then when these things are over, God says, well, this is what you need to do. Already? Uh-huh. And God some, some, somebody will say, well, no, Lord, that's too much for me. I trusted, as you said, I came to that woman. You didn't provide. Why should I make another step of faith? I'm going to make another mistake. God says, move. You understand what I mean? Amen. Some of us are getting discouraged right before the door because we don't see that open. And the answer is on the other side. Oh, God, you didn't open the door. That means I'm making a mistake. And I don't want to make mistakes any longer. Lord, I'm going to sit and wait until you're going to do the right thing. Sounds familiar. Absolutely. That's our emotions. But when you move forward with God and be victorious, amen? amen. And do what he says without... Stopping anywhere. I think it's powerful what I say today. Amen. I think God is giving the answer to many people today. God is not going to make you do it. God is going to require you to do it. Amen. Amen. God is not going to make you to believe. God will say, I want you to believe. I'm getting excited. 
Because I'm speaking about myself, my own situation. The answer is clear. Hallelujah. The answer is clear. So right after, when if your emotions did not kick in, and you did not get discouraged at the first thing what you saw, God will see that, that you made another step by faith, and He'll speak to you. He'll instruct you what to do. Amen? Amen. And what did God say to Elijah? He said, speak to her and say, do not fear. He didn't tell her that she was chosen vessel. But she was. According to verse 9, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. God has chosen that woman. Are you with me? Amen. Oh, glory to God. With God, nothing is impossible. Amen. 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 Nothing is impossible. Don't lose heart. Listen, if we're going to stop preaching the gospel or the word of God, then we're going to have to kick in and start speaking things on our own. Psychology. Amen? Amen. But here is something that is beyond any psychology. It's faith. Faith. Pure faith. Trust in God. And this is what God wants. Hallelujah. God spoke to Elijah to tell this woman, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. Don't be discouraged. But make me a small cake from it first. So he said, go home. You have the last uh, measure of flour and a little bit of oil. Just go home. Make me a cake first. Don't worry about your son or yourself. But the problem was that she told him already that I have enough only for me and my son and then we are going to die. No more. So you got to be, you see, you, on, on Elijah's place, you got to be so bold to speak things like that. Whether you are lying to the woman and you're trying to get away, to, to get her meal and just run, or whether you are really called by God to say what you said. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is why Elijah saw so many miracles. This is why Elijah was a prophet. He spoke exactly what God said. Exactly. Even it was absolutely ridiculous to our own mind. Amen. You listen? Amen. So what he really said to her, you are going to give me that last meal. Amen. Amen. And for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry. Until the day the Lord sends rain on this earth. Three and a half years, he says. You will have no luck. For three and a half years, everything is going to be provided for you. I want you to pay attention to something. Here. Here. There's probably a lot of us missing. Like I said, I love to teach the Word of God verse by verse. <laughs> after Elijah said to this woman, after he said to her, to go and make that cake for him, and afterward make some for yourself and your son, He didn't wait for her answer, but he gave her the promise. He gave her from the promise from the throne of God. And he said, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, that you, have, you will have no lack 
for the next three and a half years. I want, I want to connect this message in every point that you will see what is going on because this is a very important message. Been preached many times by many other people. I'm sure you heard about this message before, right? You read this before. You heard about this story. See, the reason Elijah was so sure of what he was saying, even it was ridiculous to the mind of men, is because at the very beginning, God promised him that this woman is going to be the channel to provide for you. So here's the catch. It's very important to stand upon the Word of God that God speaks to you from the very beginning and not to change direction, your heart, your thought about it, or faith. It's very important because God does not change. He doesn't change. No has the point of variation, the Bible says. He doesn't change. What God said, it's not his opinion. It's not his suggestion. It's his plan. And he doesn't change his plans. Amen? Amen. We must be very careful when we listen to God. Because it is our destiny that God is lining up by what He says. And if we are not listening, and we are in fear, and try to stay away and get away from what God said, we are moving ourselves, moving from our destiny. God doesn't have many ways, many paths. He has one way and one path for you. In a specific direction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what was the real deal here, basically, really, is to keep them both alive for three and a half years. He didn't preach the gospel. He was not prophesying. He was not doing anything. It was drought. And yet, God was specific to provide and to make sure that they would be provided and looked after even if they don't do anything. This is how specific our God is and care. He cares for you. We must hear God's voice before we do anything. All right? But when God will speak to you, you do it. God does not test you in the sense whether it's going to work or not. When God says to do something, it means He prepares something. He already commanded these things to happen right ahead of you if you will obey what God says now. Because God is the creator of every plan. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. We are serving in the mighty and powerful God. And today I want to pray with you, believe God. Let me just put my hands toward this camera. Now why don't you stretch your hands and touch your television sets. Let the Lord touch your life. Father God, in the mighty precious name of Yeshua, I give you the praise and I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for healing that throat right now in the name of Jesus. I can see that God is touching your throat right here. And He is healing you on both sides in the name of Jesus. You've been healed right now in Jesus' mighty name. And somebody's just teeth being healed in the name of Yeshua. You have a problem with your teeth, I think, on the low, lower part of your left side. And God is healing your teeth right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Somebody has a problem 
on your left cheek I don't know it's under or on your left cheek God is healing your left cheek in the name of Jesus to believe God continue to believe and trust him hallelujah father thank you for your goodness blessed be your wonderful name glory is God glory is God we give you the praise and the glory we thank you Lord God for your anointing today we thank you Lord God for building our faith we thank you my Lord Jesus for touching our lives because you are our Father, you are a good God, and we give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, friends, again, I want to show you this kind of a format of magazine we have right now. Again, we started last, last the beginning of this year, and now we continue again with this format on this magazine. It says House of David Ministries magazine, and it's about... Um, eight to ten pages and it's all my teachings here like it looks like this and uh, all the way on the back you're gonna have part of our catalog and of course at the end of the pages you'll say you'll see a seat sower page and a prayer request and all other things uh, there's a lot of things that are available through this magazine also you will know how to support our ministry if you would like to and many other things upcoming updates and events and all these things But it's going to be in this form of a magazine little small magazine booklet form. Amen If you would like to uh, receive this magazine in booklet form from us uh, once a month Give us a call. Give us a call and request your copies Tell us that you want to be on a mailing list and you will receive this magazine now can I talk to you about certain things that uh, it is available through our ministry. Uh, we would like you to become a partner, of course. We do need your support. And I trust God that you will sign up. I trust God that you like our ministry and you will sign for whatever amount you can. And you can do this in many different ways. We can do, we can do direct deposit once a month. Or you can do your... Uh, process your um, credit card once a month as well. It will be in our system. It's safe, of course. Or uh, you can, of course, send, send your check through mail or you can call us. Four different ways you can help us today by uh, giving to our ministry and help us. Why don't you do that? Would you become a partner today? You will receive this magazine and all the information about us and also you will help us to continue to stay on the air and broadcast this ministry thank you so much give us a call for additional prayer you give us a call again god bless you and don't forget soon we're going to announce you where i'm going to be with my miracle meetings not mine but the lord's miracle meetings and also revival meetings across this country so stay tuned see you tomorrow god bless you shalom Judah, the Lamb who was slain, you ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At the end of the age, when the earth will reclaim, you will gather the nations before you, and the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. With wisdom and mercy and justice, you'll reign at your Father's side. shield in our hand and a sword at our side there's a fire in our spirit that cannot be denied as the father has told us for this you have died for the nations that gather before you and the ears of all men will to hear of the lamb who was crucified who descended to hell yet was raised up to reign on the father
House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom. Shalom, friends, and welcome. Welcome to House of Date Ministries. Today we're going to finish our studies as we have pre-taped this message at our um, center here. And um, it's all about what God has done through Elijah in his life, in the life of a widow, about the miracles that God has performed and everything else in details. I love to teach the Word of God in details. I don't like to take a verse and isolate it. If I teach, especially here on Shabbat or Tuesday night, I take basically the whole chapter and I go through it just for people to realize and for myself as well, the depthness and the riches of God's Word. So today we're going to finish these studies and um, what an amazing and powerful example to us through the life of Elijah and a widow <laughs> and what God has done through their life. This is exactly what God can do in your life. So stay tuned, don't go away. After this message, I'll be back here and I'll be praying for you and believe in God for your miracle. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Verse 15 says, so, th so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah and she and he and her household ate for many days. They were eating for many days. They had no luck. Hallelujah. Remember I taught you a couple of weeks ago here and I said this. Whatever you're going through, the first question you have to ask of God, what um, am I learning from this? What are you trying to teach me? Get it from God, this answer, and go for it. Then you will never turn aside and you will have the victory. Amen. See, let me explain to you something. God, uh, that'll be funny now, you'll, you'll laugh. God is not trying, no, 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 you'll be funny what I'll say. God is not trying to run after you and give you the victory. God is leading you to that victory. Many of us, we're running away from God said, and God, do you think that God will, is going to run after you and say, hey, here's the victory. Get it. Just get it. Get it. <laughs> oh, praise be to God. I got my victory being far away from God's will. No, it's not going to happen. Usually when we run away from God's will, we run around, we cry around, we, we pray around, we, we, we fast around, we do everything else until we come back to the spot. And God says, oh, hi. You want to give me a hand now? Yes, Lord. Okay, let's walk. Don't run away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear, I hear it. <laughs> but it makes a lot, of, it's the truth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so the Bible says that they were eaten and they were looked after for three and a half years. There was no problems. But in these days, let's read a little bit further. 
Now it happened after these things that the son of the woman. <laughs> look, look, look what happened. God blessed them, providing for them. Seems like every, 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 everything's okay where, where everything else has fallen apart. They have it. Good. All right. Seems like everything's good. The devil still working. But the son of that woman who owned the house became sick all of a sudden. And his sickness was so serious that there was no breath left in him. So she said to Elijah, what have I to do with you, O man of God? Now she begins to, of course, blame Elijah. Have you come to me to bring my sin to, re to remembrance and kill my son? What a reaction. What a blame. Right away, what a reaction. And he said to her, give me your son. So he took him out of her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his own bed. So he had an upper room and he had his bed there. He stayed there for three and a half years with this uh, widow woman. Then he cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? And he stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, I pray, let this child's soul come back to him. The third part of my message, according to this scenario, have you catched my first and second part? Yes. Did you write things down in your mind and a heart and a paper and uh, everything, everywhere else? Internet. Internet. All right. So this is the third part of my message today. And I, I, I want you to see the whole picture from the beginning. Right? Now we came to the third part. Everything was fine. I don't know how long has been uh, uh, since, since they were living there together in the same house and eating and God was looking after them. He had his own room upstairs. Everything was good until evil has struck their home and that little boy got sick and died. Wow. I don't understand what's going on here, Lord. Everything seems like okay. We trusted you. We didn't fall into our emotions. You directed us by faith. We believed and you provided. What is that? It's exactly like I see things right here. Eight years ago, God spoke to me to take this place over. This place was dying. There was no pastor anymore left. And when God spoke to me, my wife and I, in agreement, we took it over. We were on television for a while at that time already. And when people heard that I finally have my place in Montreal, oh, they, 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 they flooded. They came. Because of the television, they saw me on television, they, they, they heard, they, they liked it, I guess, whatever. The place was looking that way. There was no wall. It was empty. Church was practically full. But when I begin to preach the gospel again, things begin to happen. People begin to leave. Didn't like it. This and that. Start causing problems in this. So. Uh, Eight years we are here, that it's not only just the congregation here, but it's our whole studio here, as you can see. Because I came here, God gave me this place, and I was a um, televangelist, right? You understand what I mean? <laughs> I was rejoicing. Finally, I got my place. We could hang the lights. We have office space. I don't have to uh, uh, look for places. And, and exactly it happened when the church in Pierrefonds that we were renting space from, they said, no, anymore. 
We have to, we have to leave. I brought everything to my house and with the next month God provides here. Can you believe this? Within the next month God provides this place. So I was happy. And my wife and myself we took it over with along with the small little congregation and people begin to come in. So we moved the equipment here. Everything began to look good and we made renovations and this and that. Everything, Brother Antonio came, you were sitting right in this corner, uh, the chair by the window. Remember that? It was the windows. These are windows, by the way, closed. We did a lot of renovations. And look at that. The trouble began. People begin to leave. Cause problems. This and that. Back and forth. Going in and out. I said to myself, Lord, I'm not here to see this circus. All right? I'm here to serve you. Whatever people do, let them do. But you have blessed me with this place. You brought me here for purpose. And out of this place, we've been broadcasted. This is why we have a life Webcast because of this place. There's no way I could do this from any other place. See what I mean? We're reaching out meet thousands of people. And we're still broadcasting across Canada. Taped here on Vision TV. Plus we have the congregation. Bible studies. Life. Everything is just according to God's will. So whether I'm doing that for the people that are troublemakers that come and go. And they like it or don't like it. It doesn't bother me. Those who like my ministry, they'll stay here. But we are reaching out to thousands of people at the same time. Because my ministry is what God has given. Television and internet. Now it's radio. Do you see what I mean? With the natural eyes, it will be a bit discouraging. But not what, because what God said. So when you have this increase of people that walking in. And then seems, seems like they like it for a while. And then something happens. Oops, I don't like it. If you're going to live under this emotional mood, you will be discouraged at least five times a week. I'll give you two days off. If it's possible. But when you keep your eyes on God and understand why God has provided this place and what God is doing is His perfect will... When I look into the decrease of people, it doesn't bother me. Because this is exactly what I see in the Bible. They were already obeying the Lord, living, eating in the drought. God was blessing and all of a sudden their son dies. All of a sudden you got no people coming, no money, can't pay rent. What are you going to do? Well... In the world, they pack up the suitcase and they run to uh, more green pastures like past, pastures, not pastors, pastures. And like Lot did. Lot, Abraham said, you choose. And he looked around and says, ah, green over there. I'm going to go here. He didn't think about Abraham, but he thought about himself. I'm going to go over here because it's green. And what he chose? Sodom and Gomorrah. You see what I mean? But, and I, I, I'm saying, I, I prayed about this place. I prayed about everything. And God says, God is just quiet. Means I'm not moving anywhere because I'm going to obey God. And he will, and he will provide. Amen. Whether you will be here tomorrow or not, it doesn't bother me. I love you. I want you to be there. But if you will make a decision to leave and go somewhere else, you're welcome to do that. But it's the place that God has given me to minister from. You understand what I mean? And whoever God will bring, I will minister to. Through television and life and physical form. It's not going to move me. Until God will say, lift up the whole thing. I'm moving you to another level. That will be goodbye. Because we all need to obey the Lord. But what happens is, what I'm trying to tell you. And you will have to understand in your personal life, 
When you see such a great increase and seems like God is blessing you and everything comes to pass as God has said, all of a sudden, something happens. Don't fall into your emotions. God doesn't change his mind and say, oops, I made a mistake. Sorry. Oh, you shouldn't be here for eight years. I made a mistake. I sh you shouldn't be next door, you know. This is why you're not blessed. Here is not good. If God has brought me here and gave me this place, it is good. Amen. Even if I will be here broadcasting by myself, God has purposes why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. All right? Amen. Amen. This is why I don't look upon the number of people I would love to. God said to David one time, he says, don't count your army. But David said, well, you know, I don't know. They're a great army and I'm kind of losing out. Let's count the numbers. And when he began to count the numbers, he got a really problem. He got himself into a big problem with the Lord. He says, I told you not to count the numbers because it's not about the numbers. It's about me and what I'm going to do. All right? So in this scenario, the boy of that woman dies. And it's not from hunger, um, not, not from um, hunger because they had food. <laughs> but he got sick and he dies. And even Elijah didn't understand what, ha what was happening. He began to cry to God and begin to blame God by saying, Lord, it says, he says, O oh Lord my God, have you also brought tragedy on the widow with whom I lodge by killing her son? I'm sure it was not God. And Lord, forgive me if I make it right here a mistake. I'm sorry. But I believe it was not God. It was just the devil. Because the devil, did you know the devil was in the Old Testament as well? People think that the devil was kind of a hidden somewhere and he was not there in the Old Testament. It just in the New Testament when Jesus was tempted, he showed up. No. He was in the Garden of Eden. The devil was everywhere and all the time. So the things that he does today, he was doing in those days. The same devil. Amen? Get in mind this kind of thing. And I believe it was the hand of Satan that brought sickness on that little boy, and the boy died. Are you with me? Amen. So maybe in the midst of all things that seems like God has blessed you, you've been faithful, God has done what He said, and seems like the whole thing has been fulfilled, that God says, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So it's, it's over. Everything should be good. There you go. The sun dies. <clears throat> Even when you see things are fulfilled and something happens, don't ever blame God or yourself or anything. You pray and say, God, I believe you are going to move me right out from this problem. Amen. 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 So he took his boy that boy, into his bedroom, laid him on the bed, the dead, man, the dead boy, laid his own body on that boy, prayed three times, because Elijah believed in that anointing that it was on his life. The connection. And look what it says. Then the Lord, in verse 22, heard the voice of Elijah... And the soul of this child came back to him, and he was revived. Wow. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper room into the house and gave him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth and is true. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So by this example, you are going to prove to your family, to yourself, to your neighbors, to everyone who knows you and to the devil himself, that you trust God, you believe God, and all that is in your heart is the truth from God when you stand your ground. Amen. 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 Are you with me? Hallelujah. 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 This is why looking into the scriptures, I'm not going to be moved. Remember that song, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Remember that song? Come on, sing with me. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Singing glory, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. It's not about me here, or my wife, or our Colin. It's about you, because you have situations in your life to handle. And God wants you to learn from this example how to handle the situations right by faith. Amen, friends. God is amazing and wonderful, and we love Him. We love Him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. Well, friends, I'm so glad you tuned in today, and uh, I just want to pray for you and believe God for you and with you. Trust in God for your miracles. So let me pray. Father, in the mighty, precious name of Yeshua, I give you praise and I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. You are good. Your love and mercy endures forever. And I give you the praise because you are our Father. You, we are saved through your blood, Yeshua. Through your blood, Lord Jesus. We are sanctified. We are saved. We are set free. And now, my Lord, I just pray for everyone who is watching now. And I just believe, Lord God, for their miracle. I just believe, my Lord, for your touch upon their life. Lord God, just reach out and touch them and set them free and help them, Lord, in each and every way. You are good God. You are not the God of any religion. You are the only God. You are the God of life, not religion. You are the God of life. In Him we move, we live and have our being. Our breath, every breath depends on you. So you are not the God of religion. You are the God of our life. And I thank you for doing that. I thank you for doing everything that you do in our life. I thank you, Lord God, for touching our lives. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for healing us today. Thank you for supplying our needs today. Thank you for delivering us today. Thank you for looking after each and every one of us. And thank you for healing everyone who is watching. In the mighty name of Yeshua, amen and amen and amen. Somebody ha has a an, an left hand here. You have a pain here. It's something on your left hand here. And God is healing you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the pain is shooting right all over your left arm. God is uh, touching you and He's healing you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, praise be to God. I'm so excited. I'm excited because the time is coming and we are going to begin our <laughs> traveling again from place to place. And as I promised last year, I'm going to have in certain places up to seven days um, revival meetings. I'm excited because I love these meetings. I, I am teaching evangelist. I'm a messianic rabbi. You can call me whatever you want, but I love to see the power of God. And I'm excited. And soon we're going to um, share with you the details of my itinerary. But today, as yesterday, I am introducing to you this little magazine that we begin to produce again. It's House of David magazine newsletter that will or make or could come to your home every month with in-depth of my teachings. So if you want this uh, magazine coming to your way, why don't you give us a call and say, I want this magazine, so we will, you will sign up and we will send that to you. So you're going to have catalog at the back and uh, all kind of things. It's, it's very informative and I put 
teachings there in depth. So you will have this magazine come on your way. Thank you so much. And friends, I just want to thank you so much for supporting this ministry. Thank you. Thank you, partners. I know you've been faithful for many, many years. Please continue to stand with us and help us to stand and help us to continue to be on the air. And if you would like to become a partner of this ministry as well, please give us a call or sign up through internet or by telephone, whichever way, whichever way you can. We have different ways of, um, uh, that you can support us. If you are interested which way you can support us, give us a call and we will explain that to you in details. Thank you so much for watching our program today. I trust that the Lord that this week's program was uh, beneficial to you and it helped you in many, many ways. Till next time, shalom to you and may God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob continue to bless you and pour out his wonderful blessings and spirit upon your life. In Yeshua's Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We praise you, Jesus. House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.